Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang them, the bombs bursting. Good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for being with us here for our production of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. We are playing Missouri Valley this evening. Thank you so much for being with us. I am Caleb Calkwood. I'm going to be doing commentary tonight, and I'm kind of by myself tonight, so uh, I'm going to be one man banning it, but we should have everything that we need. The guys are already ready and raring to go, so let's go ahead and check in on them, make sure that everything is looking good there. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that now. So you'll see over there, we have uh, the first members of our team on the far left there. That is uh, Janubis, who also goes by Andrew Greet. We've also got Will uh, Howard, who his screen name is going to be Folk Hydra, and somebody that's really been putting in a lot of work recently developed a lot since he joined the CSGO team, so it's going to be exciting to see him be able to compete there tonight. And then on the other side, uh-oh, for some reason our camera's out. That's, uh, huh, sorry about that. Okay, so I uh, guess it's just them, but we, we actually do have people on the other side. I'll tell you what I'll do here in a second. Um, there we go. All right, so little bit unorthodox but uh i know you're seeing right above their head but there's uh ethan and cole so uh laughing at my antics there there's uh uh ethan over there that's raptor claw on your right and then corn pop the captain he's gonna be on your left and then right over here <laughs> we have brandon <laughs> being a goofball uh that's super dish brandon dishman so He's going to be playing on the team tonight as well. So, uh, really glad that these cameras have a 360 degree uh, angle on them because that one is not working. So we will get that fixed hopefully soon, uh, but we'll be able to do that. So uh, that being said, we're gonna go ahead and uh, just get everything underway here. Everything's looking good. Um, not really seeing any big issues here hopefully that stays the way it is so they're getting started up here and we're going to be looking at that in just a second sorry i gotta get my script here so uh we're gonna go ahead and get underway 
just a minute. Let me go ahead and add this. And the team has been looking really good in practices here recently. They've been working really hard. And Corn Pop, of course, the new captain after the departure of Brandon Campbell, who was the previous captain. So a really big loss to the team. And they kind of struggled to be able to get over that and to be able to figure out uh, where they were going to go afterward. Uh, but ever since then, they have just been really willing to put in the work, uh, really willing to do what they needed to do to be able to set up a practice schedule that worked for everybody and face a lot of difficulty. But I really do think that they've got it more or less figured out and going to be able to be very successful for this upcoming year. So we're going to be very much looking forward to what they're able to do this season. And I, just on a personal level, am really looking forward to seeing uh, if they're going to be able to top what they did last year. So hopefully we'll get to take note of that soon. And in the meantime, thank you so much for being with us. As always, it's great to have the audience with us to be able to support the Falcon Eagles. And we actually don't have a live audience tonight because we have Jamboree coming up. So if you are in the Montgomery area and you want to see a great show, it's a musical that's put on by the various students at Faulkner. So be sure to check that out. That'll be happening later in this semester. Uh, but they're working really hard on that and they're actually using the theater as a recording room because it is mostly sound, which is the reason that they're using it but it also means that we lost our staging area. So uh, they'll be done with that probably by the time that the next CSGO mat comes around next week. Uh, but in the meantime, you've got us here on the stream and we are streaming live on Rumble, on YouTube, on Twitch, on Twitter. Basically, if you can stream to it, we're there. So if you don't watch, that's on you. Uh, but obviously you are, you wouldn't be hearing that. So thank you so much for being with us and wanted to make a mention of a couple things this evening before we get everything started. And uh, it looks like they're getting everything underway right now. Luckily, I can kind of monitor it from here, even though I'm by myself, because I can see their activity through the app they're using. So hopefully they'll be ready to roll here in just a second. That and I'm kind of also cheating because I can see Will's screen from So that's part of it as well. And we should be good to go here in just a second. And I have this opportunity, I'll go ahead and just tell you about some of the guys here and, and some of the things that they've been able to do this season. So what we've been working on primarily has to do with um, especially Dish. Uh, he has been really working on his sniping and has gotten a lot better at it. Uh, we also have Cole, who has just generally speaking been trying to improve his game uh, and He's been working on his throwables and his aim in that department. So uh, he's got to where he's been able to do some really fancy sort of smokes, flashbangs, uh, which has been fun to watch. And then uh, with Raptor Claw, he has been our newest addition to the CSGO team. So he's had a lot of growing to do, but he's been able to do it pretty quickly. You may recall that he was actually on Overwatch last year, so he's not new to first-person shooters. The main thing that he's been working on is spray control and trying to ensure that he is able to make those sort of long-distance uh, accommodations for his recoil to be able to, to bump his recoil down and sort of compensate for that. So he's been really working on that. Will has been just sort of in a general sense uh, been trying to improve his overall um, uh, game with 
for example, the early rounds, I've noticed that he's done a lot of work with pistols and aim labs, that kind of thing. So he's been working on that side of it. And then you also have Janubis, who he has been great at improving his situational awareness and also just kind of keeping tabs on people and where they are at any given time during the game. Uh, hopefully they're getting close to getting started. So they, they have to use this third party thing because CSGO is a really old game. Because of that, it's actually pretty easy to hack. And so they have to use this third party security system that just ensures that they're not doing any of that, but it causes some issues and it takes a long time to get it situated. So we're just kind of here in a holding pattern waiting until uh, they have fixed that. So hopefully they will be returning do that pretty soon. Oh. Did my mic just go out? Oh no, it's back. Okay. All right. So we will be eagerly awaiting to see what they do here. Very much looking forward to how they're able to sort that out. Um, because this is a... Missouri Valley team that we haven't seen before. We, we've we not actually played Missouri Valley CSGO. So this is going to be a completely different experience for them. There's going to be a learning curve. They're going to have to figure out exactly what works for them, what doesn't work for them. Uh, and one thing that I'm really proud of them on too is that as a team unit, they've got so much better at the terrorist side. So they used to primarily just place counter-terrorists, and they knew that they were going to lose a lot of the rounds when it came to terrorists, but they have really improved on that to the point to where they really have got very proficient with bomb, and just being able to do those quick rushes to, to be able to improve their overall strategy for slipping bomb past their defenses, and so... They really have gotten a lot better at that. And bomb placement, that's another thing they've worked on quite a bit. And uh, because of that, they have gotten to a point to where I think that they're just as good on the, the T side as the CT side. So I'm looking forward to that. And it, it, it is a little bit comforting because in previous games, one of our biggest issues that we were worried about had to do specifically with what happens if we get terrorists right away. Like if we get terrorists off the bat, we're probably going to lose most of those rounds and then we're going to be playing from behind. Now we don't have that problem as much, or at least I don't think that we will, of course, first game of the season. So we don't necessarily know that. But one of the things that was great about that is that they're not nearly as worried about maybe getting terrorists right off the bat. They feel a lot more confident that they can still make some gains and still be able to keep their head above water and to be able to make it to the terrorist round if that is the case, or sorry, the counter-terrorist round uh, through playing playing on the terrorist. So they're not nearly as worried about that as they were out. All right, so it looks like they're going ahead and getting their game settings ready. So hopefully... That means that they are going to be starting soon. I hope. Huh. Oh, you know what? I, I bet I know what that is. That's the mic issue. Hang on. All right, hopefully that. Hopefully y'all can hear me a little bit better now. There we go. All right, much better.
And we should be starting here pretty soon. One would hope. So let me go ahead and check the chat and see what the holdup is. Yeah, still not able to see it for some reason. Also... It never fails. Much like Fog. All right, we're trying to get underway here. Not sure exactly what the issue is. I know this is riveting broadcasting we're watching here. Hopefully we'll be able to fix it soon. That's uh, DC in the background, by the way. He was helping me out with something earlier. Next week, we're going to try to get him on production. So you may be having him help us out a little bit later in the semester. Thank you for that, by the way, DC. Appreciate it.
Well, they're in game. At least they appear to be. Okay, so here's what's going on. They actually have gotten the game ready. They are picking venues right now. And they've got two votes in. They have eliminated Anubis and Inferno, which, if I had to guess, Faulkner, if they get their pick, they tend to really like either... We've been practicing a lot on Vertigo, so they might try that. But I kind of feel like if Anubis and Inferno are gone, Mirage is the one that they're going to be pushing for. It's just the one that they've been on the most, the one that they feel the most comfortable with. And so because of that, I tend to think that that's the one that they would probably opt for if they could pick whichever one they wanted. So they have eliminated Nuke. Which is good. And they have gone with Mirage. So we will be playing Mirage first. It doesn't say which team is going to be terrorist and which one's going to be counter-terrorist first, so that I don't know about. But... It shouldn't take long for us to figure that out. So we will be getting underway here very shortly. Looking forward to that. Oh, apparently there is an option to veto. And that is the reason that it hasn't started yet. They're waiting to see if there are vetoes. And I don't believe that is the case. Now, one thing to be aware of is the way that we have it set up through Faceit, I do believe that there is going to be a bit of a delay so what may happen is they start playing like three minutes before the game actually starts in fact I can actually see that they're in warm-ups right now so why don't we just uh, go ahead and cut to that why don't we check out their warm-ups real quick So we're watching Will here. And it looks like Faulkner is going to be terrorist first.
So I guess they are still in warm-ups because they're short one man on the Missouri side. And that is an 11 minute warm up. It ought to be plenty warm by the time the game starts. Actually, though, that I, I joke about that, but that actually is really good because you know how long it took us for the game to actually get started. So a lengthy warm up is actually probably the best for both teams. In fact, they may have both opted to have an extra long warm up for that specific reason. Also, Faulkner doing very good in the warm-up, but that might have something to do with the fact that they have five guys and the other one only has four. So, kind of puts them at an advantage. I would imagine what's going on there is because Missouri Valley is hosting this match, their team captain is probably doing some setting stuff in the background, and that's why he hasn't joined in yet. I mean, I don't know that for a fact, but that would be my guess. So let's check out somebody else. Let's watch somebody other than Will. Let's go ahead and jump to Janubus. Trying to be all sneaky. Oh, and a nice headshot and then gets taken out immediately. But hey, that's how it goes. It's part of the game. See how Raptor Claw is doing. Raptor Claw? Oh, that's him. His volume's just not working for some reason. And Corn Pop that is works. up. Okay. You're welcome. No, it doesn't. Where's that fit? Well, that's strange. Yeah, you, you better get here. For some reason, we're hearing their comms in that feed. shot Andrew with the op doing some AWP from a long distance he just stabbed his own teammate literally in the back Nice shot by Raptor Claw. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. Janubis. This is Janubis. Backing up Polk Hydra here. Got the op. Oh! Shot the ghost CT. That was fun. See how Will's doing. 
Oh, Will is breaking pottery. Will! This isn't the Legend of Zelda. You can't just break pots like that. Oh, okay, well, getting a kill by shooting a man in the knee. Here we go. And shooting more pottery. Seems like that was a little bit of overkill. And more pottery. Will is just the enemy of ceramics at this point. Kill all the breakables. Hit the microwave, Will. Maybe he doesn't know about the microwave. Possible. Hanging out around market. That's the longest it's ever taken to kill somebody with an AWP. I can't complain though, I'm a terrible shot. Getting better though. Not as good as these guys. Oh, just kind of got caught out in the open there. Got the knife out. It's stabbing time. Hmm. He's hitting some of those shots. Had to have done some damage. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Good gracious. I'm shocked that that first shot didn't kill him. I really am. Let's go, my brothers. Oh, we're in game now. Uh... Everyone just did knife. What was that? What in the world was that? All right, well, here we go. We'll just had to stab the TV. All right, so they're rushing B on this one. Oh, and very quickly Faulkner down to two. Will is still fighting. Yeah, but gets swarmed there as tries to get over Van. So that's gonna be CT's one. Faulkner currently zero. Go, go, go. I'm throwing smoke. Hmm. 
All right, so looks like they're going to smoke and try to rush A. Will gets taken out. And Missouri Valley takes round two as well. So looks like they've mollied B, thrown a couple of grenades. Honestly, I'm a little surprised Faulkner didn't try to rotate there. Hmm. All right. So. We're getting into some of the rounds where they buy a little bit more hardware, more throwables. Somali there and gets caught. Alright, so it looks like they may be trying to slip around. Nope. They've already got fire and tunnel.
All right, Will. Got him! There you go. All right, so that is Faulkner's first win round with Will getting three kills, just having a monster round there. Alright, so jumps through Molly, but then gets killed right on on balcony or plat. The Raptor terrorists win. Just kind of times out there. So caught behind smoke here. Try a grenade. I don't think that they're gonna rush that, so might not be Will's best positioning there. Yeah, I was afraid that was gonna happen. Second he peeked, they got him. But it looks like Will was just a diversion anyway, so it might be all right. All right, they got one. So now they just got four to deal with, but unfortunately, since they got that one guy hanging out around mid, they probably know that they're going for B at this point. Oh no. Missed his opportunity there. If he had gotten that kill on peak, that would have been very helpful. Yeah. Unfortunately, Horn Pop stuck between a rock and a hard place there. He knew there were people in tunnel, and he was pretty sure there were people uh, coming up from A. But when you got when you know that you're about to be pincered, you can't just look in two directions at once. 
So just stuck in a rough position there. Will knows that they're there, but... Like, the second he stepped out behind bar, that's not going to end well for him. Off to a very slow start here. Hopefully Faulkner can turn it around. Let's go! Let's go! Smoke! I'm throwing smoke! Smoke! Alright, so this is where Faulkner really needs to put together a rally. A win would do them a world of good here.
I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe got hit by a grenade in smoke. Now they're all kind of stuck behind Van. Not a great position to be in. Ooh. Ooh, that was close. Alright, so... Yeah. Just gonna try to catch them around that angle. I figured they would either do that, or they would fake a diffuse. But either way, Andrew was just kind of caught in the back without much he could do. Really expected him to be in Sniper's Nest.
Hmm. Oh, there he is. Up on cat. Right, Faulkner has two rounds to be able to come back here. Like I said, traditionally they tend to do better on CT side. Gotta get bombed fast. It's taken out. Now it's up to Janubis. Janubis falls. That's gonna be match. So, win for Faulkner. And another match point. Remove any doubts in your head. It's us, decoy. Throwing smoke. Nice. Bomb has been planted. Ooh. Just took a little damage. Deploying flashbang. For missing that first shot. There we go. Clutch play, Dish. Getting the defusal. So, Faulkner has mounted a comeback. Now, the other team does have 15 wins, which means that Faulkner cannot take a single loss. They have to get to 16 from where they are now. But, I mean, 
Dang it if they haven't mounted a comeback here in the ninth inning and props to him for doing that. Well, commentator's curse, I mentioned that, and now here we are. Unfortunately. <laughs> that bomb is still counting down. So that's going to be it for round one. That means Missouri Valley, the Vikings have taken the first round, but Faulkner really showing some life there at the tail end. And hopefully that's a sign that they're starting to settle in a little bit, starting to understand their opponents. Maybe we'll see a little bit more favorable results for the second round. I certainly hope so. But, you know, a tough loss for them against Missouri Valley for that first round. Hopefully they'll be able to wrap up and, and sort of tighten up the screws there for the second round because the, the first round, they did show a lot of promise at that second part there. So hopefully that will be something that they're able to build on, something that they can learn from, and hopefully they'll be able to solve that problem before the second round starts. So it looks like they're getting everything set up here. Hopefully they can. Oh, they're actually in warm ups right now. So we're going to go ahead and switch to that. And it looks like Faulkner is going to be terrorist first again. got that nice long warm up to Let's do this thing. Come on. Tell you what. While they're warming up, I'll see if I can get a more favorable feed. Faulkner on the counter-terrorist side first this time.
All right, so round one goes to Missouri Valley. Now, Faulkner has been practicing on Vertigo a lot, so hope that winds up paying dividends. Certainly hope so. Oh man, Faulkner already in a fight, and now it's down to just Will. They must have done a full rush. Yeah, that's the only way to explain it. caught right at the top of the stairs there. And Missouri Valley takes round three as well. Vertigo's a tough map. And ironically, even though they have been practicing on it a lot, it seems like the team had a little bit more success on the terror side of Vertigo than the CT sky. So the incendiary. Doing its job. Yeah, unfortunately, Faulkner just picked wrong there. I predicted that they would go A as well, but they decided to go B. So it's a 3v3 at this point. Oh no. Must have got caught. Bomb has been planted. How did they? they? Must have swung up behind them somehow. Or no, that's what's ha that's what happened. They had guys camping out, and then they had somebody else that was slipping around to be. So that's how they did that. I was wondering because I was like. They went in that direction and got killed, so there's obviously people there, yet somehow bomb got planted. They they must have had a they must have had their bomb planter by himself. Which is risky, but it wound up paying off for them there. Now makes the right read, but not able to make the shot there, unfortunately. Throwing an incendiary. Dueling incendiaries. I guess it's a molly for the other team. No, an unfortunate grenade throw does not work in their favor. May have actually even damaged his teammate there. I can't tell if that was Super Dish or Raptor Claw. Oh, it was Raptor Claw. The Super Dish just walked by. Oh, that's not good. Smart play there. Fires off to try to distract him, but if he doesn't get to bomb quick, it's not going to matter. And I don't think it is. He's just going to try to stay alive and save his rifle. 
Oh, and winds up not doing that. I always thought it kind of sucked that you could be killed after a bomb goes off and it still takes your gear. I feel like bombs should lock it in, but you know. Fire. Oh. oh, so they had at least one guy run A while the rest seemed to go B. They may have been trying that same play that they tried a few minutes ago that I was talking about where they had one guy slip around. Yeah, I got the double. Tried to do a trade. Come on, Eagles. You got this. Let's go. Come on, Tom. Fire in the hole. Flashbang. Come on, Tom. Throwing smoke. So down to corn pop and super dish. I right, got one. Got two left. Bombs planted. They know where he is. Gonna have to make a play here soon. It's that bomb pressure. Oh no. So very quickly we are halfway through the first round. Or well the first round of the second round. I gotta come up with another name for that. It's confusing. So it's the end of the first half of the second round. Maybe we should just have quarters like football. Alright, down to a 3v3. Oh. Yeah, I think they're probably going B. Or, sorry, going A. They got one. Now down to a 2v2. Shoot that innocent traffic cone. Wouldn't hurt anybody. You must be suspicious that they're going to go B for some reason. I'm not sure why. And now it's down to just Will. Who has a Molotov for some inexplicable reason. Come on, Will. There you go. Will for the clutch play.
cut off one head or I guess in this case blow off one head two more shall take its place Bolt Hydra to try to catch him peeking here oh but he comes up from behind probably a different guy I would assume yeah that was not a good round for Faulkner just wound up getting surprised and then they were at a number just dis numbers disadvantage we're not able to seal the deal as it were in big with the win. And now it's down to Ethan. Oh, and get surprised for them in the back. Missouri Valley takes that one.
Oh. Going with the twin Berettas. That's interesting. Gonna scurry over to A. Mm. Yeah, just getting overwhelmed there. Three, three v one. Not a good situation. Come on, guys. You can do this. Flashbang. Ah, oh, shoot. The flashbang was a good idea, just... It was a gamble and it didn't happen to work there. All right, so we switch sides. Faulkner on the terror side. Let's go. Got a lot of ground to have to make up. I'm trying to do a sneak A on the pistol round. Somehow every single one of them were there. Wow. How on earth did they know that they were going to do that? Throwing flashbang. Throwing a flashbang. I mean if they just snuck up B. We would have had smooth sailing. E. So that brings us to match point. Eagles are playing with their backs against the wall. They're going to have to do something drastic here. So it's just a trade. You're down to 4v4. 
and now down to 3v3. Right. Trying to use some smoke cover. Got bombed directly under smoke. Throwing flashbang. Oh no. Awful luck. Got him while he was reloading. Just happened to turn the corner at that exact moment. And that's going to be Missouri Valley with a round two win, which means they take the match. Tough loss there for the Eagles. So really unfortunate to see everything go down that way. Uh, there were a couple of flashes where Faulkner looked like it. They were doing all right. Uh, you had that one really clutch round by Will. You had that one really clutch round in, in the second round with uh, Andrew. And so there were a couple of really good plays where they just kind of roast the occasion, were able to pull in a clutch win. But overall, Missouri Valley just being the better team today, unfortunately, weren't really able to overtake that. So we're kind of stuck where we are here. Um, yeah, Faulkner just not able to pull out a win tonight. So unfortunately, that's going to end our week for esports. Now we do have two matches. We're going to prioritize, of course, the Faulkner Blue Rocket League team on Monday, but we also have a Faulkner White match. So we're going to be playing both of those on Monday. And then we've got a full slate of games after the week on that. So our final score tonight with a score of Missouri Valley 2 and the Faulkner Eagles at 0. Tough way to lose this one. Really unfortunate that they weren't able to have a stronger showing. But, you know, still glimpses of the team really improving and getting better. Honestly, if you had had this exact same team two weeks ago play on Vertigo, I doubt they would have had, it as, uh, had the showing that they did, honestly, because beforehand we were just really bad at Vertigo. Uh, to see that they've been able to at least make some kind of a stand there is an improvement, and hopefully they're able to get enough practice to just sort of shake this loss off and be able to take it next week. So, again, do not forget that next week on at six o'clock on monday so coming up we've got two rocket league matches i believe we have another overwatch and then super smash bros after it so that is going to wrap up our broadcast for the evening thanks so much for being with us once again that final score faulkner nothing missouri valley to missouri valley able to come out on top for this one so that's going to be it for the evening thank you so much for being with us th this evening stay the course friends The preceding broadcast was an official presentation of Faulkner University. It may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the Faulkner University Athletic Department. Regitar USA High Res Arena is sponsored by Regitar USA. The national anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching, and soar Eagles!